Hello and welcome to a new episode of High Tech Low Code Podcast. In the spirit of the upcoming holiday, we decided to do an end of year special where we debate some techy gift ideas for the upcoming festivities. And to help us with that, we have the company of Caroline Nicholas, Gary Williams, and Tiag Nev from Outspring. Let's start by giving a warm welcome to all of them to this episode of the podcast. How is everyone doing? We're good, yeah. Yeah, all good. Yeah, looking forward to Christmas. Yeah. Okay, it is that special time of the year. Uh, how are your preparations? Is the tree and lights up already? Tree, um, lights somewhere. We're shopping. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> just no shopping. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I even got a tree the, this time uh, this year outside. So yeah, oh. I've got a a nice little Christmas tree yeah, uh, really. on the outside in the garden. Oh, that's sweet. That's really nice. <laughs> I waited yeah. to put my lights up outside the house when the children were here, thinking they'd get involved and love to do it, but actually they just stayed inside. It was far too cold. So. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Yes. They had none of that happening. <laughs> they oh. weren't feeling no, it. They weren't feeling it. And I was feeling cold. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, time to go yeah. in. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Thank you for giving us uh, some of your time. And to be able to participate in this chat before the festivities. So I found out that here in Germany, there is a tradition that the young ones, before getting their gift, they must recite a poem or play the instrument that they have been learning. Uh, what about yourselves? Do you have any special traditions on your family? Oh God, no, well, no playing it. Well, I can play instruments, but I don't do that. But I think the sort of midnight mass is one of our traditions in my family. I've not been for years, so a bit lapsed there. But it was really something that you really looked forward to, caught up with loads of people in church. And then afterwards, you know, you just eat loads of food and drink, watch some random film, etc. But it was something that sort of cemented that Christmas feel on Christmas Eve. So that's sort of one of my family traditions yeah yeah we just have the normal tradition here of leaving the mince pie out and the carrot and some sherry for father christmas and, and last year the kids the kids set a trap so they have some bean bags and they where and they put things all around where father christmas would come put little um sort of oats and reindeer food you know, oats and glitter that kind of thing but my daughter put a blanket over a bean bag so i made it look you know, basically, so if Father Christmas came to where the, the mince pie and carrot and everything was, there's no way you got there without actually disturbing this stuff. So, <laughs> so an ambush yeah. for Santa, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a bit like home alone type. Of thing. Yeah, he didn't get hit by a can of paint or something, or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I don't think I have any really sp tradition uh, with with the family uh, around this time. Uh, what we try to do is, uh, for instance, with the, with the kids, uh, to open their presents on the 25th in the morning, uh, so we, we don't do it in, in the evening of the 24th. Mm -hmm. So everyone is very excited and looking forward to wake up the next day for yeah. sure. <laughs> <laughs> Get you out of bed at 5 a.m. and that sort of thing. You know, that's yeah. what I used to do anyway. Yeah. <laughs> uh, myself, I think uh, it's not. It's just something that we all I would always do with my family, which was. The day to put up the tree would be on the 1st of December, always. Uh, of course, there were exceptions, but due to outside circumstances. Um, and we had this treat back in Portugal called the Rabanada, and which is a slice of, uh, cooked slice of bread with egg and uh, cinnamon. Super good. And I would always eat that as during the evening as a treat and the next day in the morning with a cup of coffee. I don't know. I don't know if those count as holiday traditions, but those yeah, were mine. Yeah, I think it does. Yeah, it sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this being uh, the High Tech Local podcast and with us working in the tech environment, what gifts and gadgets would you suggest to our audience? Um, I can't wait to get this ideas flowing. So starting with Caroline. So ladies first. Okay, thank you, Mario. So from a, a tiddy's slant, so I sort of looked in terms of what I was buying for my son. So first one is um, sort of Instax Mini 11, which is sort of from Fujifilm. So I don't know if you hark back to the old Polaroid cameras, you know, you click mm -hmm. a button and, you know, little 
a three by five inch whatever picture slots out. Yeah. The film was extortionate, of course. You know, yeah. those inserts. You stand there waving, waving it to you. Yes, you have to wave it. Don't <laughs> put your fingers on it. You know, otherwise yeah, you'll get a thumbprint or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is sort of the millennial version now. You know, it's mm. even got a selfie feature. So, should Kitty want to give themselves a selfie of them and their friends? But it's very much of that same mold, but much smaller, a bit more sleeker. Um, enables yeah. them to take instant pictures, very kiddie, user-friendly, so literally simply one or two buttons. And I like the idea of it coming full circle. You know, you go from the old big clunky Polaroid camera to this new you know, millennium sort of mini version, which is very sleek and, you know, you can upload things somehow, somehow on your phone, mm -hmm. et cetera, laptop. So I think my son, you know, just turned six. I think that's something he can really get on board. And, you know, something I can use as well myself or show him how to use it while he's getting to grips with it. But it just looks very easy use. Lots of fun. Reminds me of my own childhood in the 80s, you know, with our own Polaroid cameras, etc. And but just a new spin on it, a new twist on it. And I think he'll get sort of hours of fun taking random photos of floors and <laughs> corner of ceilings or whatever while he yeah. gets the focus right. So that really appealed to me. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not ordered it yet, but I probably will do that later. I was sort of looking at videos of it etc my second one is sort of because he loves drawing my son does and he does craft clubs and things like that art clubs All right you know, <laughs> and call it drawing of sorts you know and um i saw a, a 3d pen i saw that the other week and I, I saw a 3d printer at my old work probably about four years ago we were donated one for the welcome collection and you know loads of us used it i printed out a blob of plastic or something, <laughs> something very indiscriminate, but I was fascinated by it. And now you can get these 3D pens for kids and they literally can draw and create something tangible and 3D. Um, in, the, in the sort of promotional website that I saw for it, there was a kid drawing an Eiffel Tower, which I think would be beyond my six-year-old son at the moment. <laughs> but it just opens up a whole new world, you know, rather than just drawing, using a pen, etc. You can actually yeah. create objects, you know, something artistic, or he can create as many blobs of colour as he, as he wishes or see things. All around the house. Yeah. yeah. So I think there'll be these random bits of plastic or whatever filament it is yeah. they use that will just pop up in, you know, and, um, unfortunately the, the inserts of that, they, I think they're quite extortionate as well. <laughs> so we'll be going through loads of those, you know, hopefully you won't get yeah. bored of it, but it depends how much the inserts are. <laughs> so, so that looked like something really fun that he would get on board, something techie related, but just something easy that he can pick up press of a button, start drawing, writing, you know, create something, as I said, be it the Eiffel Tower or a blob of you know, whatever filament, but it just looks something really fun. So, so those were sort of the two um, items that I've got my on for him. You know, I did mention, I think the other day about looking at PS5s, but I think that's a bit too beyond him at the moment i think he's happy with ipad games and games on my phone or what have you so i'll put that on hold i think maybe next year um didn't have to anyway they're, they're out of stock I've been that's the thing yeah iPad. you can't get them for love nor money can you no. yeah no. so it's probably too late to get one of those anyway you know mm. and then my own gift to myself um, is a, a Fitbit Sense. So for those of you who are familiar with smart watches and, you know, fitness trackers, you know, I did have one which I lost when I moved house. So I've not seen it for about two years and it coincided with when I stopped exercising anyway. So I no longer needed it. <laughs> so, so that's fine. But for, with the whole new year coming, you know, everyone floods the gym or starts running or doing random acts of exercising, you know, so those my, new year resolutions yeah, <laughs> i might even get my bike out and you know start cycling so i thought i'd tie it in and get a fitbit because it was always a good motivator you know even if it's just meeting your ten thousand steps you know at one point i recall just walking around the house yeah. <laughs> to get around the 10, just to make the target because i never went below ten thousand. and if i was having a, a day where i was just sat in meetings all day 
or I didn't go out for lunch or go out to do any exercise. I'd go up and down the stairs of an evening just to hit that target. But I always found like it really always spurred me on to do just any exercise, be it walking or be it getting on the bike or, you know, going for a long walk or something. So that's what I'm sort of definitely got my eye on for, you know, to tie in, as you said, Mario, with those New Year's resolutions that we all set ourselves after eating too much turkey and <laughs> you know, drinking too much, etc. and boxes of chocolates, what have you. So, so yeah, so those are my sort of three on sort of my wish list this year. Uh, I must say, the 3D pen and the Insta Mini uh, do seem interesting. Uh, yeah, they are. These are sort of like, yeah, kids, you know, kids of this generation, you know, their, their toys seem much more cooler than what we had. But, you know, if you hop back, yeah, what we had was just as cool anyway. So, yeah, you yeah. might be surprised. One day you get home and you have London Bridge yeah. on your house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Tower Bridge or something. Yeah, yeah. Got an artist in the family. Yeah, which would be surprising because I can't draw. So, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Gary? What do you have in mind for this season? Well, I've gone for um, more things for myself, actually, uh, for two reasons. One, my children get more than enough as it is, um, and I might just let them out the chokey on Christmas Day uh, as, a, as a special present for them. Um, but I also thought whatever we chose as a, as a, as a thing. Tiago, being the best boss in the world, would buy them for us. So <laughs> that was my list <laughs> is an expensive list. <laughs> and the, the first one, I play drums in a band, and playing acoustic drums at home is just the most unpleasant experience for everybody around, including including you as the drummer, because you can't you can't play properly. So um, I've been looking at a, a, a Roland kit. The brand is Roland. And their sort of professional series drum kit is an electronic kit, and it kind of looks like an acoustic kit. Um, there is a bit, a bit um, shallower the shell, so it's not physically as big. So it doesn't take as much room up. But importantly, you can wear headphones with it and um, play play your music to yourself without being too too much of a disturbance to your neighbours or your fellow housemates. Um, but crucially, I played a, 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 an electronic. Electronic drum kits have been around for a long time, haven't they? And, um, I've played them in the past, and traditionally they were little rubber pud pads, you know, sort of six or eight inch diameter, and you'd hit it with your stick, and it'd be either loud or soft. There wouldn't be much dynamic, and really playing drums, it's all about the dynamics. You know, if you're playing on your snare and your hi hat, and um, you, you, it's all about feel. It's always about timing drumming, but it's about feel. And those rubber pad things, they, they're not pleasant to play, and you don't get the same dynamics. Whereas these rolling kits, They are so much more advanced. The, 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 the brain, the module that um, is monitoring all the trigger, the latency is amazingly quick. Um, the, the snare drum, um, it's got three layers of, of mesh that are uh, sensing the, the amount you're hitting, the impact, the frequency, the, the, um, all sorts of playing techniques when you're doing drum rolls and, and, and all, the, all the playing techniques. It picks that up and they are absolutely amazing. Um, and of course, being electronic, you can choose different kits. When you buy an acoustic kit, quite a lot of drummers have a, I don't know, a, a, a snare drum made out of um, certain materials, steel or wood or whatever, um, to give it a different sound. With these electronic kits, you can get anything at all. You can model the sound and adjust how loud it is and the depth of the shells. It's just, it's just amazing. So, but they are about six thousand pounds, something like that. They're, they're not. <laughs> quite a gift yeah when does the budget <laughs> version come out yeah <laughs> goodness yeah i was going in big going in big oh, go there. large yeah wow <laughs> so um that's my wish list it's not going to happen but that, that would be on the wish list the next thing i was looking at is again for me um and you just mentioned 3d princess carol and, and i've been looking at those and they again go from cheap sort of home things where the accuracy and what you can do them is limited versus great big professional things where you can print with tool steel, stainless steel, all manner of materials now. You can make parts that actually are not just um, good for, you know, um, proving a concept of a design, but actually you could make a part, you know, for like an old car. So you, you can't get a part anymore, but you can, you can design, design this part on CAD, print it and actually use it in service. Um, because of the materials that you could uh, you could do, so not that I would go for that, but I've been looking at a cheaper one. This is one and a half thousand so I'm going cheaper now. Um, 
this this thing I've looked at, the Snapmaker 2.0, um, you can print normal plasticky type materials as well, but it's also got a head where you can do laser etching, so you could put a piece of wood under there and it will burn a, burn a pattern, so you could create artwork with it. Um, or leather bound books, that kind of thing. You could, you know, kids' belts or bags you could you could print. So it burns, it's all one colour, obviously, because it's a burning like a like a, a burn sort of type marking in it. And then there's also a CNC head so you could mill mill things. So my old life of making things when I was first left school and my first job was actually manufacturing and working as a tool and prototype maker. So that that really appeals to me making things. And as as you guys know, I've been during lockdown invented a garden tool. And part of that, I need to do the next stage of the CAD models and actually create some 3D printed versions of, of, of this gadget to prove the final sort of production version of that. So they're the two things for me. And then I did feel sorry for the kids. So I did throw something in for the kids, which was prompted by a, a recent um, podcast that Mario and I did, did with the guy with the, the ceiling lights thing, the Arduino. So the, the Arduino package. So something there for the kids to introduce them into robotics and, and coding. So my daughter's 11, my son's nine. And I think we're just at that age now where they would appreciate that. And so I bought, I bought Sophie and my daughter. I originally thought my son would like it more, but actually recently conversations when the kids have been doing sciencey things at school, Sophie's been coming back all excited about making things, been in this robot sort of course, encoding course. And she's been really into it. Jamie, my son, not really as interested. All he wants to do is play Fortnite on his PlayStation. So. <laughs> So I've, I've swapped, I bought it for Jamie originally, the Arduino, but now it's, uh, I've earmarked it for Sophie and I think she'll get a lot of fun of being introduced to coding and making little things. I think though, when Jamie sees it and sees that he can mechanize certain things, switch things on and put sensors and all the rest of it, I think his imagination will run wild. And I think it's a really good thing to get kids into that at an early age. So, so they're my three choices. So, yeah. Oh, pretty cool. I like the printer, to be honest. Yeah, the, the printer is a good idea. <laughs> yeah. well, I love it, it's, it's more than just a printer, right? With the engraving and so on, really yeah. cool. Yeah. Yeah. True, uh, true, 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 true. Yeah. Yeah. I love the, the idea of the acoustic drum, but only because you said it's a Roland one, and that takes me back to the 80s and Top yeah. of the Pops, and every artist yeah. who was worth their salt had either a Roland synthesizer yeah. or drum kit or something yeah so for that, really drum kit to like an optical shape yes yeah really space age, so that yeah. nostalgic yeah. factor i heard rolling yeah. i was like oh okay yeah but no, they sound really cool yeah all right all right and finally tiago what have you been considering for has a possible tech gift for the family or or yourself well yet yeah, it uh well whenever thinking about giving something to my kids um I guess I just turned into a kid also, <laughs> uh, looking around for, for, for ideas for them. Um, but uh, yeah, I, by, by the way, so I have a, a eight-year-old and a three-year-old uh, boys. And uh, <clears throat> um, I have uh, um, one of the things that uh, um, I so started by myself uh, and I was interested myself on was uh, the, the Raspberry Pi. And uh, well, it seems that they they have now something that uh, would be more kids friendly, let's say. And uh, it it comes now uh, built into a, a keyboard uh, and uh, with the mouse, and uh, basically you just need to connect it connect it to, to a monitor, and that's it. So you got a, a computer in your hands, and uh, uh, and any kid can just uh, really uh, start using it. And uh, that there are some. Uh, um, it does come some with, with some instructions uh, uh, to to help kids uh, learn. Uh, in this case, um, and uh, not using the Windows uh, OS for sure. So this runs on a special operating system, a Raspberry one, uh, and uh, which might also be interesting for them uh, to uh, to try something that uh, uh, isn't uh, the standard. Uh, everyone for sure is currently on on Windows or, or Mac. Um, and uh, it, I think it's, uh, um, it might be um, a good, uh, in this case, obviously, for the oldest, uh, eight years old, uh, to, to try out. Uh, he's been asking uh, anyway for, uh, for a computer. Uh, um, I, I mean, he's, he's thinking about playing games, obviously. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but so uh, why not? So giving what he wants, but something that eventually can uh, do something more uh, with, with it than just playing games. Uh, so. Th that was the the idea. Um, 
but yeah, so coming coming from something that I I had uh, an interest on myself uh, to just get some Raspberry Pis and do some uh, some uh, some experimentations around. Um, yeah, I've got my house full of uh, Alexas and uh, things like that. <laughs> uh, so Alex is all, all around. Um, but uh, but yeah, so it's uh, 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 I would fancy to, to see uh, him uh, getting into this world of, uh, of computers. Uh, nowadays, they, they they fortunately so didn't happen with me for sure. But uh, uh, they do get in 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 contact with with this already in school. Uh, so they have uh, oh, some some programming basics uh, actually. Um, so it's it's definitely uh, a different age from when when we were uh, their age. Uh, but but yeah, so th that was one one idea. Uh, it's not expensive by the way, so a hundred pounds basically. Um, and uh, so if if it, uh, if it just ends up just destroying it, I mean not not something I would fancy, but uh, <laughs> you at least you didn't spend a big amount on on it. Um, but for for the little one. Uh, Looking, looking for for the same to get some them to kind of uh, start start organizing their, their thoughts and uh, uh, so getting into this uh, more way of structuring their uh, their thinking. Uh, there are some very nice uh, ideas around, and uh, one of them uh, is a thing called Code Appealer. Uh, so I'll, I'll code a pillar. <laughs> Uh, I said it's right. Uh, basically, this is uh, uh, just um, uh, you build a caterpillar uh, in different blocks. Uh, and uh, the goal is so that there's a game uh, where you have a, a start and a finish, uh, and uh, you can place these uh, anywhere, let's say, in your living room. And uh, the goal is that uh, the kids need to work out how to build uh, this caterpillar. Uh, in a way that so these different blocks that um, uh, end up constituting the caterpillar uh, will have different instructions, the, the blocks. And so uh, the caterpillar will go uh, uh, ahead in front, will turn left, uh, the one, two uh, um, steps. Um, and they have to build this in the way that uh, uh, the caterpillar starts on that start point and needs to reach that uh, uh, end point based on how they build it. So the instructions, uh, how they build the, the caterpillar um, will tell how the path it needs to take, it might have obstacles in between, etc. So they need to structure their, uh, their thoughts and uh, Obviously, trying out, uh, so they, they, <laughs> for sure, no nobody will able to to get from from start to finish in in the first attempt. Um, but so they will end up having to think, uh, try, uh, go go back, and uh, that's part of life. So what we do, uh, for sure, uh, with uh, with our work, um, that we we always have bugs that we need to correct, and uh, so nothing comes out right at the first attempt, uh, at least for for me. <laughs> uh, but uh, so I think it's a very uh, good uh, option for, for a little one, uh, three years old. Um, something uh, other than that is, um, uh, again, something that I would fancy myself also to experiment, uh, but more in the robotics field. Uh, and there are some, some really interesting things out there, uh, including uh, w with Lego, but uh, uh, there are so many different options uh, currently. I mean, I'm sure, sure everyone will be able to find some options uh, more cheaper or more expensive uh, around these same concepts. But it's uh, just building uh, your robots and it can include sensors. Uh, and uh, there's uh, it just lets the creativity go, really. Uh, the, the kids can just, uh, uh, the same way that you have pieces of Lego and you can build whatever you end up thinking of. It's very similar, uh, this also. Um, and uh, you, you can uh, build all, all sorts of uh, different formats and uh, with the sensors. Uh, so it's uh, really st stimulating, I, I believe, uh, for, for, for the kids uh, to just try and uh, let them thoughts go uh, wild. So uh, that's, that's kind of uh, the, the educational part of it that I think is really great. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, uh, sorry, go ahead, Caroline. No, I was just saying, um, when Tiago sent us the link about the code of pillar, 
and I did tell Tiago this the next day. Like I've ordered one for for my son because I loved it. I read about it. I saw a video about it. I thought, oh my god, this is excellent. He's at the top age bracket of the age range. They say three to six, but he's only just turned six last week. So I thought he's still got scope to to learn something from it. But I just thought it was a, such an amazing way to introduce coding, logical thinking, you know, get their head around things like that in terms of how to problem solve, you know, and get a bit more tech savvy, you know. So I, I thought that was an amazing, you know, gift potential and a good learning tool as well as being fun. So that was actually one of the recommendations I did. I was like, tick, yeah, I'm <laughs> taking that one. <laughs> Brilliant, yeah. yeah uh, for me, it's the the... The mentioning of the Lego Mindstorms, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, you, you come on, you, yeah. you can't go wrong with Legos. Can't get it. It, That's true. It gets the, everywhere, uh, though. Yeah. <laughs> that I, I didn't mention, but uh, you, you can also do some programming on on, on those Mindstorms, uh, Mario. Uh, so you, you can uh, so you can also uh, basically uh, build some, some instructions for for the robots uh, to to follow. So. Uh, with some visual coding, uh, so that's kind of touching uh, something we, we do here at Outsprint. Mm. Uh, so uh, it's definitely, uh, I mean, uh, we uh, when when we were starting, for sure, our, our career. So all, all of this seemed a little bit like science fiction at the time, um, and it's just amazing to see these now available to, to, to kids to to play with. And uh, I just uh, wonder where. Where where they end up really when uh, when they're back in uh, where when they are in the, in the job markets once uh, they reach our age uh, because it's uh, the future is really theirs I believe. Oh yeah, 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 you know what this reminds me. Have you ever have you guys ever seen the movie Lost in Space? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So th there's this scene. So the son is supposed to be super genius of the family that goes into space. And there's this scene where the, the teacher is uh, scolding the son and the son is playing with the holographic projector. And the father goes, please stop doing that. I don't know what you're doing, but please stop doing that. <laughs> and he's changing the teacher's body with the gorilla, then another animal, <laughs> stuff like that. But then that's what happens, isn't it? Um, your kids take on tech or you know advances that the adults no longer understand so yeah. my mom would yeah. see us with ataris and all sorts you know she bought them for us but she had no idea how to switch them on or plug them in or, <laughs> or do whatever she didn't know what we were doing you know but it's that advancement you know and your kids will carry on the mantle where they'll be delving and using you know technology that will be sort of beyond us, you know, at some stage, yeah. which is quite depressing really when you think about it. But, but <laughs> then we need to go and ask them help. Oh, help me with this. Yes. And they'll do, oh, well, this, again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, it's part of the circle. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Um, there are some very interesting gifts here. Again, Legos seem like one of those perfect gifts where you can uh, spend some really good quality time with your son or daughter um, and where they can build whatever they imagine so it's creative yes. and then you can uh, appeal to the logic part with the, the pro visual programming and maybe do a robot that goes in circles <laughs> I don't know or or kicks a ball something like that although we, we've mentioned Arduino and the, the Raspberry I um, also think th those are really good activities with the, the young ones although supervised <laughs> <laughs> So they don't destroy it within two days or something. Well, yeah. well we're, we're talking about um, stuff that can be really appealing. And once they understand it, how it works, it can really boost their, their interest in technology. But I mean, they're still uh, bare bones. They're still very delicate parts, you know, <laughs> a, a toss of that against the wall. and it, Exactly. It's game over. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine my daughter with the uh, you know the trap story about you know she set these traps for Father Christmas last year. I think now she's got the Arduino. Next year she can have motion sensors and all sorts of. <laughs> oh yeah, Mission Impossible. <laughs> lasers, <laughs> Santa has to sort of get under the laser. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so Santa becomes Tom Cruise, does he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and in January, can I imagine you two, Caroline and Tiago, with your coder pillars? You've got yes. one each, haven't you? Yes. 
they'll, they'll be in the office you can have races within the office <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> office become uh, an office fixture yes yeah. yes <laughs> oh, wait. that's actually a good idea we can do the office olympics you know yeah. bring the yes. caterpillars and we see actually, if they can yes. do the change some, some, something fun yeah. actually yeah. the Alps for the olympics yeah yeah <laughs> There we go. Something for the future. Mm-hmm. Food for thought. Food yes. for thought. Don't forget it. Um, yeah, this seems like all very good ideas. I might steal some of them if you if you guys don't mind. <laughs> of course, no, no. So while looking at other links, you'll come across other products, and your expenditure bill will be massive by the end of it. So, uh, yeah. So, that, yes. that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's usually the thing uh, with the today's platforms like Amazon and whatnot. You go yeah. searching for one thing, and you go. Next to it, oh, it's this one, but yeah, it has more well, features. Recommendations for you at the bottom, you know, and then you're like, oh, and that leads into more spending and, mm-hmm. you know, more credit card battering, etc. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's a dangerous, dangerous tool. I mean, Amazon, yeah. 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 Get away from Amazon, don't log on. <laughs> it's the where, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is good. Any more ideas that popped into your heads? while we were searching on, like yeah on the music theme because Gary reminded me because I used to play piano when I was younger and I stopped when I left school but I was thinking of actually getting a sort of synthesizer etc and I don't mean just a mini piddly one but a you know a large top of the pop style yeah, you know, really? one and start you know playing the piano again and getting back into it so just thinking about where to put it a lack of space mm. yeah but but that, that's been on my mind for a while you know so so that's sort of on my radar for the new year oh that's good well, i'm starting to see that we have uh, quite a few uh music people in in, in our office yeah, we could start the yeah. band yeah. actually yeah. i was thinking about that i was thinking about that yeah. do you <laughs> uh, play proposing... anything mario no 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 yeah. i'm just tossing the i'm just tossing the, the idea and let you guys do it <laughs> a triangle or something you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. no let's not do that let's not do that <laughs> no no and then that's... i can play the bell you, you, you triangle and me the bell <laughs> then i think it's good but we need to wear masks or something like that you know just to make it more interesting <laughs> the mask singer that could be you yeah <laughs> no that's good that's good um All right. Anything else you guys would like to mention? I mean, we're almost reaching our end time, but still. Anything that's uh, struck me? It's not particularly over techy, this gadget, but <clears throat> I bought something. It's a bedroom-related um, article, and it's one of the best things I've ever bought. And it's a it's a clock. That it's a projector clock. So you know, like an you know, LED clock at the side of your bed, and you know, the middle of the night. Right. For me, when I wake up, I always seem to want to know what time it is, to know whether I'm nearly getting up yet or not. And uh, I got this LED projector clock a couple of years ago. It's the best thing because I, I sleep on my back. And I just look up and it's and it's great big numbers on the screen. So 5.30 or whatever, 6 a.m. <laughs> that sounds awful. Yeah. That sounds good for someone who sleeps well. For yeah. someone who doesn't yeah. sleep well, I, massive, I would imagine. Is there a massive Big Ben style alarm that goes with it or something? Yeah. Okay, it could go one or two ways and it's useful. One. Yeah. I think it's just, it's just one of the simple things, but actually it's changed my life in, in that respect because I was... I was I don't often wake up, but when I do, I want to know whether, is it worth going back to sleep or yes. not? Yes, do you get enough <laughs> snooze time? Do you have yeah. to jump out immediately? Yeah. So now yeah. you've got this Jean-Michel Jarre light show going on <laughs> <laughs> in your bedroom <laughs> every morning. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, uh, that was so good. Yes. Uh, I love it. Uh, I guess with that, we can end our end of year special episode And I think the only thing is missing is to wish everyone a happy holiday season and that you party hard at the end of the year so that we can start 2021 on the right foot. Thank you very much, uh, everyone, for joining and taking time off your schedule to participate in the podcast. And to everyone else, thank you for listening. And we hope you can join us next year for more episodes of High Tech Low Code Podcast, where we'll feature more guests and approach other topics of importance to the tech world. Goodbye and see you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cheers, bye.